Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Rogers. Now, I don't normally do reviews on theatre releases, but since I'm a huge shark movie fanatic, I thought I'd make an exception. Now, I'm going to keep spoilers to a minimum, so unless you want to go in with a fresh slate, then I'm not going to ruin anything major. Now, I admit I am a bit biased because I'm obsessed with oversized monster movies, but this movie was so good. Loosely based on the novel of the same name by author Steve Alton, The Meg has been in what you'd call development hell since way back in 1996. Disney bought the rights to the novel, but they couldn't come up with a good enough script for them to get a green light. In 2005, New Line Cinema bought the rights, but they struggled to find the budget to make it worthwhile. But finally, Warner Brothers bought the rights in 2015 and had Eli Roth on board to direct. However, due to creative differences, he was replaced by John Tur Turtle Daub, or however you say it, and here we are in 2018 with a completed product. So we meet Jason Statham's character Jonas, who is the typical cliche of the reluctant hero who has a bad experience and then is called to action because he's the only one equipped for the job. I just wish for once there was an action movie where the hero was actually up for the challenge, but I guess everyone loves an unlikely hero. There was a great lineup for the cast. Alongside Statham, we had Rain Wilson, commonly known as Dwight from The Office, who was a totally unlikable character, but he played the role really well. We also have Australian actress Ruby Rose, who attempted an American accent, but failed miserably. It's like halfway through every line of dialogue, she remembers she's supposed to be American and then changes back to Australian. But that didn't get in the way of some good chemistry between the stars. I don't quite understand the point of the character DJ though. He just seemed to be there and wasn't much of a comic relief and added nothing of substance to the story. I sound like I'm nitpicking, but I honestly loved so much about this movie. Since it was a high budget blockbuster, the CGI was incredible and there were some truly memorable shots of this prehistoric creature. You don't see the Meg until about halfway through the film, which is common for monster movies to sort of build the tension, which works really well here and leaves you in awe of this killing machine when you see it in its entirety. The story was gripping and a few twists along the way kept it unpredictable and kept you second guessing. Plus it managed to pull off some genuinely emotional scenes, which for a movie of this genre is pretty hard to do. Plus Pippin the Dog is all the reason you need to go see this movie. People have said that it's neither good or bad enough to be a genuinely entertaining movie, and I get that, but I think it successfully walked the line of seriousness as well as breaking the tension every now and then without getting too silly, which shark movies often are. A lot of movies like this rely on a lot of gore to be entertaining, and I'm not against that at all, but The Meg manages to do well without it. However, I ain't gonna lie, I would have enjoyed a bit more blood and guts. That said, I think if you're going to see The Meg, you 100% know what you're gonna get. It's definitely not gonna surprise you, and you do have to be up for a classic Jason Statham character saving the day. But I had a lot of fun with this and I definitely recommend checking it out. But let me know what you thought of the Meg. I'll be chatting with you guys in the comments. But thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. And if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers and that is all.